Okay. Whew. Good morning. Happy Saturday, everyone. Well, no one. Let's go. The U-Bahn ride home feels especially comforting today. Berlin chapter of the Humanist Paul Club has suffered, oh yeah, that's what we did last time, has suffered a terrible blow, and you're the one who dealt it. Volker Stahl's plan to incite a wave of bloody violence. Oh no, what has just happened? <laughs> Alright. Oh, I didn't get to read it again. That's fine. I think I read it last time. So let's go, uh, I guess report that job completed to Sammy here. Hello again, mein Freund. What can I do for you? Um, yeah, here's, here's the deets on Humanus. Mm, this fits with Humanus's established pattern of behavior, horrific and vile. According to this datapad, Humanus compounds all over Berlin have received major, uh, similar shipments. They are planning to deploy the gas tomorrow morning. I have a feeling that the Flux State will have a thing or two to say about that. Stahl has overstepped his bounds. His hubris will be his undoing. You mark my words, within the next few hours, the Humanus Poly Club is going to take a hammering that will make the Night of Rage look like a peace rally. Oh, you a great deal, Jack the Rigger. We all do. I will wire your payment to the account number that Amsel provided. Cool. Cool story, bro. Let's see, let's go use that uh, payphone. <sighs> Alright, delivering. Cool. Yeah, I guess we'll go talk to Luca. Oh yeah, I don't want to know anything about it. Oh. <sighs> Welcome back, Runner. Uh, yeah, okay. We did your shitty job for you, Luca. I only got a thousand million from that. That feels like kind of not worth it. So how much of our, um... 
like personally, we only have like three thousand million. How how much do we have for this so far? How do I check that? The computer? Well, let's talk to all of our peeps. Did he come on the run with us? No, I think he did. I think we could have used him. Oh, hello, puppy. What a good woofer. How you doing, Deet? You really came through for me, boss. You ever need anything from me? Anything at all? Then you can count on me. I'll come running. Hey, how's Alex? He's a good kid, that nephew of mine. Give him some time and he'll shake Stell's programming. It might take a while, but he'll adjust to life here in the KB. Oh, thank you, Foregathers. In the meantime, I found a good home for him. Samuel agreed to take him in. Um, oh yeah, he is human. Best thing for the kid will be to learn through immersion. If he stays with Samuel's group, he'll have no choice but to interact with metahumans. Soon enough, he'll learn they're no different than anyone else. For first few days will be rough, no question, but he'll make it through and come out the other side a better man for it. Um, I guess it is on, uh, on Alex now. Yeah, that's right it is. And when push comes to shove, he'll do the right thing, just like he did with Star. And on to other things. You remember what I was telling you back before we climbed into the van? Oh yeah, a reward. That's right. Thanks to our, let's not to mince words, heroic actions back in that swine pit, the Dragon Slayer has seen fit to grant me his favor. And now I know what that means and what I can do with it. So spill the beans. This. <clears throat> That's not very impressive, bro. I can make a blue fart cloud around my feet. As you watch, the spot that Dietrich is pointing at begins to glow. Lines of force spreading out in a scintillating web, and a feeling of raw power suffuses your body. I've just torn open a channel between myself and the Dragon Slayer. That power you feel is his power, pouring through the ether and into that spot. If you're familiar with ley lines, it's the same basic concept. I constantly consecrate a patch of ground and as long as I stand in that spot all of my magic gets stronger um oh yeah could someone else stand there don't see why not like I said it's basically a ley line as long as you're on the dragon slayer's good side I don't see why you couldn't use it my idol he isn't stingy with his gifts Anyway, boss, I want to keep fiddling with this learning to properly control it. And I'm sure that you've got things to do as well. You take care of whatever else it needs doing. And by our next run, I'll be ready to use this. Cool beans. Let's check our computer. Now, how the hell are my audio levels? I don't even... I don't have audio out! I didn't have my game audio on, so you didn't have this great music. I guess you could still hear me, though. It's a good thing I freaking looked. Um, I'm gonna lower it a little bit. I don't want it to be too, too loud. Yeah, maybe that's good. No, no, no. Maybe should come here. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu. Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna. It's not really flavor text. Come on. 
How much do we have? We're fifth of the way. Just got one of these from a Transys Neuronet rep. Wants me to sell them in my store, so I took the puppy for a test drive. Signal quality is insane. Makes for a huge difference in comfort and decking fatigue. I can stay jacked in for hours and feel fine. Last session I had set a timer just so I wouldn't forget to eat. The specs on that thing look impressive, but I'm an allegiance man. Does the comfort really make that much of a difference? My decks are generally beaters anyway. Allegiance, what are you doing with that thing? Playing video games? Any serious decking is going to require way more horsepower than that thing can push, even overclocked. <laughs> sure. Help drowning in drug and drug messages. Alright. Meet and mate. Is that this world's tender? Malware tinder. Uh, yeah, safe house list. Cool. Uh, is there anything else that we have here? Oh. Okay. Um. Okay, so now the Alice Fund should show more. I think. Oh yeah, we have these. Is this job? Come on. Oh, it's it's in like a chat format. Ugh. Greetings, I am so I trust that this connection is secure. Naturally, to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Call me Air Schmidt. Very well, Air Schmidt. You have some business for me? Indeed, I have a job for your team. A simple matter. Judging by what I have heard of your team, I imagine they will be well suited to the task. Go on. The interests that I represent have learned that AG Kemi Europa is working on a company-wide project. Something very secret, very new. Reliable sources inform me that they're keeping a working prototype of this new venture at their Berlin facility. I see, and your employers wish us to acquire this prototype for them. Naturally. Well, what is this project? If you want my team to grab the prototype for you, you, they'll need to know what they're looking for. Well, I'm not at liberty to say. I can tell you that the prototype has been branded Mark VI. And I can tell you that your team will find it on the 25th floor of the Berlin facility in the office of one Albrecht Haushofer. Further, I can assist your team in disabling building security and gaining access to the 24th floor. From there, however, they'll be on their own. Such vagueness can be dangerous, Herr Schmidt. I will not commit my team to a run without a better understanding of what the job entails. Facing such dangers is the purpose of a Shadowrunner, Air Amsel. Your team will be rewarded handsomely for their services. My employers have set aside 20,000 Nuyen for the job. Consider it hazard pay if you wish. Make it 25,000 Nuyen, or look somewhere else. 22,500 Nuyen, final offer. 
Farewell. I'll pass your offer on to my team. Are there any further details you can provide? Haushofer's office will be locked behind a vault door. The lock is old-fashioned, of the mechanical variety. I will provide your team with a copy of the key. I will also supply you with a little black box, a solid-state device that your team can use to override a variety of building systems. Your team will enter through the facility's underground garage. When your team has acquired the Mark VI, you will have them exit through the same garage. I will have a van there waiting to extract them. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that sounds fun. Here you will find the complete transcript of my conversation with Air Fox. <laughs> That's probably not how it's pronounced. <laughs> Fuchs? I don't know. I don't know if German. A potential client. The job seems to be relatively straightforward and the pet is reasonable. <laughs> One word of caution before you proceed. There are aspects of this run that you might find morally troubling. Be sure to read and understand the specifics of the job before accepting. If you do accept, you'll be expected to carry out the requirements of the job in full. Okay. Hey, Ramsel. Yes, I'm here. To whom am I speaking? You may call me Air Fox. <laughs> Very well. Please describe the work you would like to have done. Straight to the point. I like that. Very well. I would like to retain your team services to clean up a mess. Go on. My employers dispatched a team of operatives to conduct a quiet little operation at a local Sharon Pharma AG lab. Unfortunately, they seem to have botched the job. The team was eliminated, but we have reliable information that one of the operatives has been taken captive. If this rogue agent were to spill the beans leading back to my employers, it could lead to lost uh, to a corporate war. A great many lives could be lost. My employers would like nothing more than to prevent such a tragic turn of events. Ah, I see, and you wish to retain my team services to tie up loose ends. Exactly. The captive operative is a rigger by the name of Thorvald Enstad. We need him neutralized before he can inform on us to his captives. As Enstad and his team have already put the facility on high alert, stealth will not be an option. Your team will need to shoot its way in, eliminate Enstad, and exit the facility. A straightforward enough task, and well within my team's capabilities, but what are you offering in terms of pay? How does uh, 15,000 New Yen sound? This offer is non negotiable. Ugh. That sounds like a less fun job than the other one. Yeah, let's, uh, let's pass for now. We'll see if we need to do that. Not stoked about that. Let's talk to our peeps. As you approach, Iger turns to face you. Her rifle has been field stripped and is lying in pieces on a sheet of butcher paper. Arranged in a neat row along the edge of the paper are bottles of copper solvent, bore cleaner, and lighter fluid. Do you use lighter fluid to clean rifles? I don't know. A fearless leader returns. What do you need? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts? After all the moral ambiguity we've been wading through, Hidden Humanus was incredibly satisfying. What they had planned, it makes my blood boil just thinking about it. I still wish that could have put a bullet in Stahl's spine. But if the fallout from tonight's run is as far-reaching as I think it's gonna be, he's probably gonna wind up wishing he were dead. And that's almost as satisfying. Uh, are we good? Concerns? What do you mean when you say good? I won't question your competence again, not in front of the others at least. But I'm not gonna lie, I still have concerns about you, Jack. Uh, what kind? Basic ones. I don't want to see history repeat itself. Yeah, what history? 
I'd rather not go into it, fearless leader. Let's just say I've had bad luck with under-experienced teammates and leave it at that. Interesting. Uh, sure, tell me about your time in the KSK. Nah, I'm not in the habit of sharing war stories, Jack. Not with the people who've never served. Yeah, what do you think? I'm too dumb to understand? No, it isn't that. You've been under fire before. You, you'd get it. But I don't share war stories with civilians. You may be a shadow runner, but you were never a soldier. Hmm. Doesn't have to be a war story, sure. Alright, Jack, you win. I owe everything to my time in the KSK, from my street name on down. So you tell me what you want to know, and we'll see where this goes. Hell yeah, tell me how you got your street name. Back when I was in basic training, a fellow recruit made a vulgar joke at my expense. He said that I reminded him of the north face of the Eiger in the Bernese Alps. Huge and beautiful, but dangerous to climb. His tone left little doubt as to what sort of climbing he had in mind. I think he was trying to preposition me in his clumsy way, poking me in front of the other recruits to try to provoke a reaction. Anyway, he got one. I broke through of his ribs and the name stuck. Ooh. Oh, jeez. I mean... I'm not sure breaking the dude's ribs is actually a, a good reaction to that. Yeah, let's just be uh, funny. Ah, oh. we, we screwed up. And you're trying to be cute, or you completely missed the point. Neither would surprise me. I didn't break his ribs because he propositioned me, Jack. I'm not a goddamn savage. I put that recruit down because he demeaned me, and he did it in front of our peers. Thanks. Uh, no, I do, like, IRL, think that she overreacted. Um... Like, someone says a not nice thing to you, physically, like, bring it to a physical altercation is, I think, not ever called for. Uh, but let's not piss her off more. I'm not gonna calm down. That's a horrible thing to say to people when they're angry. Uh, yeah, so you got angry and you attacked him. Is that, uh, is that it? Yeah, it is, and I had a damn good reason to be angry. If you can't see that, you're even more clueless than I thought. One way or another, I was getting saddled with the name Iger. As soon as that idiot made his little joke, it was a foregone conclusion. My only choice in the matter was whether it happened under his terms or under mine. If I hadn't broken that twit's ribs, the name Iger would have meant a difficult sexual conquest to a whole barracks full of recruits. And what I would have been to them from and that's what I would have been to them from that point on. Thanks to what I did, my new name meant the troll who doesn't take shit from anyone instead. Tell me, Jack, which would you rather be? Ugh fuck. No, I don't think she did the right thing, so, uh, fuck it. It wouldn't matter to me. If you haven't talked behind my back, I don't care. Then you're a fool. And in the field, nothing will kill you faster than losing the respect of your team. I'd remember that if I were you. Nothing. I mean, I feel like I'd lose respect to my team if I physically attack them as well. By the way, like... <laughs> Like, that's like prison yard logic. I don't know. By the way, Jack, I'm aware it's more than a little ironic for me to be telling you this. After Monica's death, if you were the one who was dressing me down for Avams on the rest, 
Well, anyway, I don't want to dwell on it. I just want to say I'm sorry for putting you in that position. Anyway, you need anything else? We can get back to prepping for our next run. Um, well, let's go deeper. Tell me about your team. Fair enough. I guess you've earned it. There were eight of us, two commando squads, working together as a single unit. Schmidt and Lange were combat deckers. Wolf was our rigor and combat engineer. Fisher handled demolitions. Braun was a medic, and the rest of us, Metzger, Kruger, and myself, were weapons experts. Our mission was extraterritorial, technically illegal, but important enough to justify the risk. We'd been sent across the border into Poland. The Russian Mafia had set up a cottage industry in human trafficking, trafficking all along the uh, odor nysa line, and it was our job to disrupt it. Oh. Yeah, I guess that does sound like more something you'd have like the police or a SWAT team or something do. Uh, around whatever the Polish version of like the FBI. Typically, yes, but in recent years, the Russian mob has become more and more heavily militarized. Well, you just gotta militarize the police, duh! The brass decided that they posed enough danger to the region to qualify as a ter terrorist threat, and that brought them under our purview. Anyway, we were a good team, experienced. We went through a lot together, and we chalked up a lot of kills. In our own way, I'd like to think we did some good. Yeah, who, who lead? Metzger, best leader I had the pleasure of serving under. He was a hell of a man. He went down with the rest of the team. Everyone but me. What? What happened? No, no, that's one story I won't be telling. They died. That's all you need to know. Uh, well, thanks. Yeah, later. Now let's talk to, uh... This lady. Jack the Rigger, what do you need? Yeah, how are you? You solid. It doesn't look like we have any new dialogue with her. Yeah, you sure? Yeah, I think that these are all the same questions we could have asked before. Nothing new. But let's uh, let's see if she'll answer now, maybe. Kim started running in the shadows much more than five years ago, Tops. So what's with the vintage chrome? It was cheap. It gets the job done. End of discussion. Yeah, I don't think so. I've known a lot of street sams in my time. I've never met anyone who'd voluntarily install cyber that old. You're right, leader. There's more to it than I'm letting on. But I'm not interested in talking about it. Uh, you do seem a bit guarded and withdrawn. Talk to me, I can help. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I can help. I doubt it, Chummer. I very much doubt it. But I appreciate the sentiment. Maybe later, when we know one in one another better, we can get into it. Okay, so I, I don't know either of them enough, I guess. I guess I still have to do, like, their personal quests, maybe. Yeah, take it easy. Uh, 
Uh, does this guy have a personal quest? I have some questions for you. I want them answered immediately. Oh, um, hmm. Drogan Kippa. How long were you in there? I ended up there after the anarchist revolution of 39. I was just a kid back then, too young to realize how good I was, how much money I could have made working the shadows. And so being young and dumb, I fell in with the gang crowd and that was it. Uh, I don't like, uh, that's like, why should I trust you? Hmm, I don't like that, but... But damn, let's just go with it. Why wouldn't you, Chief? I mean, just look at me. I'm a trustworthy guy. Very trustworthy. Uh, sure. Tell me about the gang you ran with, dude. Well, I don't know all that much, Chief. I wasn't a member of gang leadership or anything. I'm not really sure why you care, either. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted it to test. I totally test um, people like this. I'm gonna piss you off probably, right? If that's what it'll take for you, trust me, fine. Anything for you, Chief. But where to begin? When I first arrived at Drogon Keep, I spent uh, some time taking in the lay of the land. Schwartz, Herzen, uh, were still a pretty small gang, strictly street level, but I could see they were going places. I did a little pro bono decking for their leader, a fat little dwarf named Dieter. Soon enough, I was part of the family. For a drug gang, the schwartz Herzen were decent enough folks. I made a lot of money with them. Helped them take it to the hotel in the first place. We had a lot of good years there. Then Dieter was killed in a firefight, and our happy little family fell apart. Uh, yeah, that was that during the hotel attack. Mm, not exactly. The SH managed their, uh, maintain their hold on Drogon Keepa, but the change of leadership was bad news for me. After Dieter kicked the bucket, his second in command took over. She was a real piece of work, called herself Leone Luster. She had a vicious streak a mile long, and she was none too fond of me. Did she turn on you? Did she turn you on? Leone Luster. That's an interesting name. Immediately. I don't know why. Maybe she felt threatened by my friendship with Dieter. Back before he ate that bullet. And maybe he was just jealous, or she was just jealous of my rugged good looks. Who the hell knows? The point is, she went after me. Vigorously. Within 24 hours of Dieter's death, I had a price on my head. And then the hotel got taken over. So that's what you need to know about the SH. They were a great gang, a powerful gang. I helped to make them that way. And then they had a management turnover and everything went to hell. That's it, end of story. Anything else you see fit to talk about? Uh, sure, there, there are plot holes. Come on, Chief, this is all ancient history. Wouldn't you rather talk about the future, the runs we're gonna do, all the money we're gonna make? Yeah, tell me what happened between you getting that press on your head and the hotel getting attacked. Alright, alright, Chief, fine. If that's what it'll take to make you happy. So I was in a bind, right? The members of the SH, who were loyal to Lester, were all out for my blood. And none of the others were going to stick their necks out for me. The advantage of being a ganger is protection in numbers. When those numbers turn against you, you got to get creative if you want to stay alive. did what I had to do. Lester had declared war on me, so I retaliated and I won. Oh, without ever firing a shot. Oh, so did he, like, tip off some other rival gang? The ones that took over the hotel? 
You won't be satisfied until I spell it out, will ya? Well, okay. I hacked into Lester's computer and sent all of her, her information to a rival organization. Remember Frank from the hotel? He was my liaison. Then they hit the SH, and they hit him hard. Then they took the hotel, and, uh, well, then they took me. I'll admit the plan backfired a little. Uh, I don't think he's a traitor. Like, if she had already put the price on his head, like, then she already, like, hmm. But I guess this did have, like, it wasn't targeted at just her. Like, those other people who were just in the gang that were, I guess, co workers before. They didn't like they didn't step up to defend him, but also like they didn't really do anything wrong. I don't know. Um, hmm. uh, fine. Must be nice. You did what you had to do. Thanks, Chief. I knew you'd understand. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to get back to what I was doing. We'll talk later, I'm sure. And Chief, I'm glad to be a member of the team. Uh, well, sweet. Let's talk to Polly. And then we can go on that other job. Ah, oh, Jack, welcome back. I have news for you. In your absence, I've been looking into the Harfield Manor. Whatever Firewing is up to, it is both large-scale and well-funded. I've uncovered a money trail leading from holding companies all over the world to an offshore account with a dummy address. From there, all of that freshly laundered money flows directly into the Harfield estate. Yeah, would the dragon have investors? It's doubtful that the Firewing's pawns even know where their money is going. This is typical of draconic plots. Uncover a stream of money flowing behind the scenes, and there's a fair chance you'll find a dragon at the receiving end of it. It's just one of the uh, dragons from Dragonstead. To a dragon, conspiracy is second nature. Firewing different? Sure. Yes, and look at where it got her. When the Firewing launched her attack on humanity, it was an act of hubris. She lashed out because she didn't consider our species to be a threat. It would be equally hubristic for us to assume that she will make the same mistake twice. I will continue digging into this while you and the team tackle your next run. With luck, I'll have more information to share upon your turn. One last thing, Jack. Malit was able to restore the readable surface of one of Green Winter's DVDs. If you'd like to take a look, you'll find it sitting beside the player. Oh yeah, just one? Okay, so this is how they'll uh, jerk feed us exposition, I guess. She's still working on the others. Many of them are extensively damaged, and getting anything off them was proving to be quite a chore. She has told me that she'll be in touch, and uh, if and when she makes any headway. Well, we have a DVD to watch. It's probably just like a DVD rip of, uh, I don't know, some old horrible movie. I guess second DVD. The screen goes black for a moment. The Green Winters. Oh, then Green Winters appears on the screen. Uh, so yeah, 2054, alright. So it's already this Green Winters. 
All right, as I said in my last recording, I've been having trouble finding hard facts on Firewing, so I thought I'd open things up a bit. Let's see what the rumor mill has to say. The screen jumps, and Winters reappears in a different location. He's now clutching a mug of soy calf in both hands, and there are bags under his eyes. Oh, were there, were, were there not bags under his eyes before? Well, that was enlightening, assuming that any of it was true, that is. So, for the past five hours, I've been poking around some of the crazier fringe theories related to dragons and the socks. As a reminder, the Sox has, is an irradiated wasteland between France and Germany. It got zoned off back in 08 after the Katanom Gao reactor meltdown. Fringe theories. So he's listening to, like, Alex Jones theories. Anyway, there are all kinds of rumors floating around the place. I've heard stories about a walled city in there that operates on a survival of the fittest, killer-be-killed basis. Sort of like a nightmare inversion of Berlin. All the anarchy, none of the stability. The radiation, poison, cancer, and mana pollution are just the icing on the cake. So when Adrian helped the Luftwaffe shoot Firewing down, she crashed into the socks. That much is well known. What isn't well known is that all of modern day myths that have arisen about her since. And tonight I've heard an earful. I chatted up a girl who claimed to be a ghost rat. That's a smuggler that operates in the socks. She told me about a dragon cult called the Disciples of the Cleansing Fire. Apparently these cultists worship some sort of radioactive ghost dragon. Could be Firewing, or it could be nothing. But it's worth digging into, all the same. Another thing that my little ghost rat told me. The popular rumor in the socks is that Firewing's astral form was... I guess you'd say mutated by all of the background radiation. Some of the glow punks out there say she's shed her body like an old coat. Others say that she's trapped, doomed to languish as an intangible radioactive ghost. I don't know how much credence to give any of this. After all, I don't have any proof that my ghost rat is even a ghost rat. She might be, but then she could also be a run of the mill glow punk. Or maybe she's just yanking my chain. She's never been in the socks at all. Who knows? Well, it's food for thought anyway. I don't know whether the thought of some radioactive ghost dragon thing is any scarier than a genuine dragon is. But it's interesting all the same. Now the big question is, will any of this get me any closer to finding Adrian? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no, but you never can tell. So this is the next day. All right, let's continue thinking outside the box. I'm going to Taco Bell. That's outside the bun. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. After the dragon fall, the great dragon Kaltenstein came flying into the socks to rescue the Firewing. But he was driven off, some say killed, by Lofweir and Nebelhair. So what if there's another dragon involved in all this? Alright, let's run down the list of major dragons that could be helping her. First, there's the Golden Worm, Lofweir, the CEO of Seder Croup and quite possibly the single most dangerous being on Earth. Lofweir's a local boy, so he'd be in a position to help Firewing. He certainly has the financial capability to help her. He could send a small army into the Sox if he wanted to. So he's definitely got the means, but I can't see how he'd have the motive. He actively prevented the Firewing's rescue back in 2012, after all. Same thing's true for Nebelair, so let's scratch both of them off the list. We've got Aiden, the great Sirush. He's operating out of Turkey. By all accounts, he's not a fan of Lofweir. They're actively competing for territory in the Middle East. So I suppose that could be considered motive. Reviving the Firewing might cause problems for the Golden Worm. But would he risk a war with Seder Krupp by straying into Lofweir's territory? Hmm, I don't think it's likely. This uh, Keladir out in Wales. He's pretty heavily invested in trans ne Transus Neuronet, 
So he's got the money, but he's too busy dealing with the BTL killer scandal in Transys uh, throughout London to get his claws dirty in the socks. Dunkle's on out in the UCAS. No, there's a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am. The Firewing's acting alone. Dragons don't cooperate unless they absolutely have to. After all, why bother making nice with your equals when you've got an entire planet full of pawns at your disposal? They don't need to work together. They have us to exploit. It's clearly corrupted. Hmm. Is this a meaningless stream of text? I don't know. Vauclair and still my big brother still searching for Firewing. I'll swear to Aslian, I will find you if it's the last thing I do. Not getting any closer. I swear to don't know who okay so not much information in that uh, so I guess all the rest of these will just be corrupted is this the same text as the two discs back maybe or there's two tracks back the screen goes black and the same digital chime that you heard on the Dragonfall DVD plays again Crackle of static fills there, followed by the same now familiar electronic whine. Whoa, it's Adrian. Okay, this is from, yeah, that very first recording during Dragonfall. All right, so it's like past Adrian. Hermie, it's me. I can't sleep. I don't know where you are. Adam, fun, no doubt. Maybe flirting with one of those unattainable beauties you're always chasing. That's good. I want you to have a pleasant, normal life. After all, one of us should. I can still smell the smoke, Hermie. It's almost a year later, and I can still taste the stench of burning corpses. When I sleep, I can hear the sirens and the screams. There is no sound in this world as horrible as a burn victim's screams. Are the sirens like Silent Hill sirens as well? That would make that much better. The doctors would call this PTSD, I'm sure. They'd have me in therapy, maybe dose me up on SSRIs, like they do to our veteran soldiers. <sighs> Quite a story for the tabloids. The great dragon slayer, Adrian Vauclair, mentally incapable of wrestling with his own demons. No, no therapy for me. And certainly no medication. I have a reputation to live up to, however poorly deserved it is, and however little I want it. The dragon's still alive, Hermie. Of that, I'm certain. One day I'll find her, and then perhaps I'll be able to sleep through the night. Okay. Very interesting. So what's all jobs do we have? Let's see. Oh yeah, we have 20k to go get. Let's get on the U-Bahn. Oh, we should gear up first. And spend uh, all of our delicious karma. Maybe some charisma. Let's 
security, Shadowrunner. Corporate or academic? Or gang? I don't know. What would be the most useful? I don't think I've ever taken socialite. Stick with five charisma and get a little bit more. Oh no. Sorry, charisma. Okay, we'll get five charisma. What do you got? Uh, actually, what do, what do we currently have? So we have a Strato 9, which is a Class B. So we can get some Class A's. I guess we get both of these. Um, and that won't leave us with a whole lot of personal cash, but... sell some of these old things. So we have we could unequip this and get a higher level one. Yeah, give me some more more stuff. I'd like to sell. What a why do I have so many different things in my stash? I don't know. Secure rigor clothing, that's garbage. I'm never going to take the drugs either. I doubt I'll use these grenades. Whatever, we got some of our money back. Let's get one of these. Whoa, what is this? Oh, decking, I don't want that. Plus one drone combat. Wait, what is our current outfit? I'd love to know what our current outfit actually is. Oh, we're wearing like an armored suit, aren't we? Plus it is armor five. Yeah, what are we current? Oh, armor five, but charisma. Okay, so maybe I will get that other armor five thing then. Okay. So we can sell this. 
We're never going to need that again. Industrial strength coveralls. Oh, that looks hideous with the hat. But whatever. Yep, let's go for it. Actually, for this, uh... This mission coming up, maybe, um, maybe the charisma will be more helpful. That next mission that we, we didn't accept yet sounded like pure combat. That's, that's probably where it will be less useful. What did we even need to do on this, uh... Oh yeah, we have that little black box a device that's going to shut down the systems and secure is already going to be shut down I think you said I don't know whatever maybe we'll put on that other outfit before it... where am I where am I going I'm going to Ubon Well, pupper, it's time to, uh... And here's a pet. No, I, I didn't want to close the dialogue. You stay put. Cool. Let's bring Blitz because we didn't bring him last time. Um, bring Iger and Glory. Well, it feels real bad. I really like taking Dietrich. Um, but I want to. Like, I haven't done any of the other personal quests, and so I want to get closer to the others. So we'll try this without him. Glory's gonna be very sad though, not getting hasted. Mark VI, monolithic, plastic, sterile. The Berlin office of AG Chemi Europa is all of these things and more. The worst qualities of modern corporate culture, all mixed into a toxic stew and sluiced into a single prefab office building. Thankfully, you shouldn't have to stay long. According to the intel that your client provided, this should be a simple smash-and-grab operation, and you've been given the tools to carry it out with a minimum of fuss. The Mark VI prototype, whatever it is, is waiting for you on the 25th floor. It's time to go and get it. Okay, we can. Let's, let's go ahead and change out our outfit. Um, I guess we could bring a trauma kit. Looks good. stuff to look at. Oh, wait, I need to get a good look at myself. Oh, I figured it would be the same color as it is in the, the inventory icon. It's like this nice uh, teal-ish color. Supplies. 
Project Atlas. I guess I'm dressed for doing maintenance work. Let's plug in the box. A tiny red light sent into the box's lid begins flashing. After a few seconds, it turns solid yellow and then finally shifts to green. At that instant, all of the lights in the garage turn off, and a few seconds later, the emergency lighting kicks in. If what Schmidt told you is true, you've just killed the main power for most of the building. In theory, the box has also circumvented the security cameras on the building's upper floors. You should be able to intercept the camera feeds by tapping into an elevator console on the 24th floor. Sweet. Without warning, your comic screen bursts into static. You hear a telltale series of clicks. Someone has established an audio connection to your comlink. A moment later, a deep, sonorous voice speaks into your ear. You recognize it instantly. Your lodge contact, Luca Dewar. Hey, Jack. Don't speak, just listen. I have a proposition for you. Understand that your team is currently en route to retrieve a package, the Mark VI prototype, if I'm not mistaken. My associates and I are interested in acquiring the Mark VI for our own studies. We would like you to deliver the device to us. Once you've acquired the Mark VI, you will proceed back to the garage as planned. There, you will find a transport parked beside your client's van. Load the Mark VI into the transport and you will be rewarded. Herr Schmidt will also be dealt with to protect you from reprisal. To accept our offer, simply proceed as instructed and return the prototype to us. Please note that we need the Mark VI in undamaged condition. If it is not in full working order, it is useless to us. As you know, our organization takes good care of our friends. It would be to your advantage to help us. Good day. Is he going to pay me, though? Like, the same amount? Because, I mean, I don't, I don't care who gets it. I'm just here for a paycheck. This looks like the elevator console. Camera feed should have been routed here. Um, let's find a way upstairs. Oh, what happened here? Interesting. Gas detected. Okay, so that's why that sign is dead. Oh no, I wonder if us turning out the power like caused him to drop something. And now the T virus is spreading throughout the facility. Now let's see. Observation. Warning light strobes out from the console as you approach. Large white letters streak against a red background. Warning, toxic containment detected. CO, uh, COCL2 phosphine, phosgene gas, hazardous material override engaged, laboratory entrances locked down. Uh, yeah, search my memory. 
phosgene gas is a valuable pharmaceutical component in its gaseous form. It is both colorless and odorless, and is extremely toxic. It can be neutralized with the introduction of gaseous ammonia. Ammonia. Let's save. Just to just to, you know be on the safe side. Okay. The scientist lays dead beside a small pile of smashed glass, and a number of beakers have been knocked over on the nearby table. The combat stim gross. helpful then hmm. I mean two should be enough right ah, what the hell we'll take it on the counter is a note carefully can transcribed in neat handwriting the paper bears the letterhead of senior executive Leonard Stromberg. I'm still waiting for that report when I said ASAP. I meant I needed it yesterday. Stay until you've completed the test, then leave the report on my desk. The door code is 54139. I'm gonna write that down. I don't know where my notebook is right now. So I'm just gonna write on this random piece of paper. I know it'll be, I guess, in my journal or something, but it just makes it easier to reference if I have it right in front of me. Then I don't have to look through the menus to try and figure out where it is. Do this tonight. I expect to see it waiting for me when I arrive tomorrow. I wanted it yesterday. I'll get it tomorrow. Um, Ken Blitz, you do anything with this? The computer's powered on, but in sleep mode. When the screen comes to life, you find a half-written text file on the screen. The timestamp on the most recent edit tells you that it was written just a few minutes ago. I didn't sleep much last night. It doesn't look like I'm gonna sleep tonight either. The last te test batch failed. My fault, I got the mixture wrong. Sloppy work, Jensen. I can barely keep my eyes open. Gotta try again, though. No excuses in this office. I despise relying on stimulants, but I've got no choice. Gotta keep going. Progress marches on. Starting a new batch. If Househofer's pet isn't ready to be tested tomorrow, well, best not think about that. Gotta concentrate. Remember lab safety. Keep alert. Keep awake. One wrong move could spell disaster. Hmm. A pet. Interesting. Stupid fly. Let's read yesterday's entry. A week! He waits an entire week before telling me that tailoring the mixture is an unacceptable solution. And then he tells me that the trials are begin tomorrow! I have no time, and Giesbrecht's applying so much pressure that I can barely think. Bastard! Haushofer's probably threatening him. All of them can rot. 
maybe now that Haushofer's playing heaped sheets with Gesprecht's secretary, he'll learn to lighten up. We can only hope. Anyway, I have some new ideas to move forward with the formula. Admittedly, they're far-fetched, possibly even dangerous. But if I don't start producing some results, I get the feeling it won't be my problem for much longer. Wish me luck, journal. It's science time. Sure. Tailoring doses to individual patients has worked wonders. The key was taking a gene therapy-based approach. What the, what the hell, fly? Sorry, super distracting. The key was taking a gene therapy-based approach. They've been using it in medicine for ages, so why not apply the same logic here? So in a nutshell, I've used the subject's own DNA to delude their immune systems into believing that Formula 17 belongs in their bodies. Simple and effective. The, this approach has helped to increase the formula's absorption rate, as well as significantly reducing incidences of rejection. Unfortunately, it also rules out an easily mass-produced product, but I'm convinced that the results will justify the additional costs. The new formula arrived today. Formula 17. I swear, whoever names these things must have no imagination at all. Formula 17. Honestly. Still, I can't wait to start working with it. From what I've read, early clinical trials were promising in the extreme. Amazingly potent, this stuff. And increased potency means less frequent injections. At a lower dosage, there's nothing like it. Oh, there's there's nothing not to like. Despite my enthusiasm, there's still much to be done. Speeding up absorption rates is first on the list, and I have some concerns regarding the subject's immune reactions. Perhaps the formula could be tailored on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. So yeah, we read that in the reverse chronological order, but that's fine. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be some sort of weird stimulant uh, m mutant creature or something that we're going to fight. Like some, some sort of beast jacked up on roids. I don't know. Data store. Check out the data store. Welcome to the AGC Data Library Archive and Employee Record System. Enter search terms to begin. Oh. Um, Formula 17. Oh, executive level authorization required. Well, it won't be as door code, but I will try it. Authorization accepted. Welcome, Herr Stromberg. A complex chemical formula displays on screen along with a series of notes. Formula 17 appears to be a drug designed to suppress higher brain functions. Specifically, those functions related to emotional responses and decision-making skills. From what you can tell, the overall purpose of the drug is to remember to render a subject submissive and pliant. The notes go on to suggest that Formula 17 was developed as a component of a larger project called Atlas. Apparently, Project Atlas has something to do with the cybernetic augmentation. Formula 17 was developed to help reduce the instance of rejection in Project Atlas's test subjects. So this is like... All a Deus Ex reference, I'm assuming. Recent trials of the formula have been extremely encouraging. While initially a serious concern, fatalities have recently dropped off to a statistically insignificant level. The document is accompanied by a fairly extensive record of testing performed on metahuman subjects, along with death records over the course of the project. The Shock Wellenreiter will be interested in all this information. According to their charter, sharing this information with the world would be a top priority. In the wrong hands, however, this formula could cause immense harm. I'll keep that in mind. Um, I don't think we have anything else to really search. I, mean, I guess we could search for the Mark 6. Well, that same code work? Uh, 
Mark looks prototype data stored under Project Atlas heading. Redirecting inquiry, Project Atlas. Oh yeah, I could have just searched Atlas. Volumes of information begin to flit across the screen. A good half of what you're seeing has been redacted, and the rest is written in an impossibly dense corpse speak. VP level authorization required. Okay. Stromberg's not the VP, right? There is? I don't fucking know. Let's try it again, actually. Maybe we already had VP authorization. Oh, we did. Oh, no, we don't. It's ex oh, okay, we only have executive authorization. We need the VEEPs. Okay. So we'll have to somehow get the VP's code. Uh, now, all of these cameras being numbered, is that meaningful in some way? Let's go into this mechanic room. What is this? Building maintenance. That's what I'm dressed for. Really, that's all? Bit of a waste. Office is this junior executive Werner Hardegger? Oh no! Oh, I should have grabbed socialite. for inspection, you notice something interspersed among the colorful bouncing sprites of the screensaver. There's a symbol that you recognize, the dead drop marker of the Shock and Wellen Rider. As you study the display, a green light winks on above the terminal's display, the recording light of a pinhole camera. The screensaver disappears, and the screen floods with glowing green text. Shock and Wellen, Shock Wellen Rider contributor 1432 recognized, welcome Jack the Rigger. This is an open request for information about the projects and material prototypes being developed at this facility. It is known that a synthetic drug is being developed here in support of a project called Atlas. In addition, a functional prototype called Mark 6 has been developed. Okay. The first contributor to, to provide us with project data for Atlas, the chemical formula for this new drug, and visual records of the Mark 6 in operation be handsomely rewarded. All three are required. AG Chemi Europa is known to be a heartless corporation with little regard for metahuman safety or morality. They guard their secrets jealously and seek to hoard all information gained for themselves. This behavior cannot be allowed to go unpunished. Punished. What they know, all shall know. No longer will they hide their secrets in the shadows. The timely delivery of this information will be well rewarded. Freedom, equality, information, shock wallen rider. Oh, uh, well, okay. So here's an office we can't get into. The senior, oh, okay, this is Stromberg. Enter the passcode. This is this. Mm -hmm. 
A stack of business cards on this desk reveals that it belongs to one Annika Schroeder. A cursory search reveals that the desk drawers are stuffed full of lewd love notes, all hastily written on scraps of office stationery. Exploring Annika's desk feels like embarking on an odyssey of filth. 30 seconds in, and you've already learned three new euphemisms for sex in a storage closet, as well as exciting new definitions for a variety of common office terms. Thankfully, your search also turns up something of more immediate value, a scrap of paper with a name and a five-digit code scribbled on it. Is this the code we need? 8479. Okay, so the first one is our good boy Strom. Second one is a house. Uh, I should probably make this slightly more legible so I, uh, I do know what it is. <laughs> so this is like his secretary's desk. We did hear that he. The secretary was screwing house over. Project Atlas folder. The folder's empty except for a single note. Moved to digital archive locked under executive authorization. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. So let's see. Did we not get the drug form though when we looked up um, Formula 17 in the archive? Let's go back to the server room. Maybe we can use a uh, house over. I don't remember what um, position the house over has, so I don't know if he's a VP. Uh, let's look up Formula 17 again. You know what, let's try it with house's code. A complex chemical formula. So, like, that's the formula, right? Copy the formula. Sweet. Atlas. Download the project. Access visuals. Please tell me that you are a VP. Hell yeah! Record recordings of laboratory experiments on metahumans. Images of an extensive series of cyber surgeries being performed upon a large troll. Records of that same troll carving his way through opponents with a massive axe, so we're going to fight that troll. And gun cam footage from what appears to be a vehicle-mounted chain gun. The weapon's been photographed tearing apart a variety of targets, both artificial and organic. Sure. So, where do we upload that? Do we do it at a payphone like normal, or can we do it from here? Look, I guess we just have it. Uh, okay, so we just need to get to the next floor. go through these guys. Oh, there's stuff in there. There's loot. Are these windows? I think that they are. They can probably see through there if we go. I 
like loot, but let's try and do this more stealthily, maybe. Oh, elevator console. Executive elevator. So either of these should work, but. Sweet. Tempted, but let's uh, let's not let's not bother with them. Save game. Confirm. The elevator whisks you upwards, towards the executive level 25th floor. As expected, the run has been relatively smooth sailing so far. A chime breaks the silence as the elevator glides to a stop. The Mark VI is somewhere on this floor. All you have to do is find it. Okay. Emergency lights wink out, leaving you in the darkness. A moment later, the building lights flip on, cranked all the way up to full illumination. The light is uncomfortably bright. Uh-oh. Have we been rumbled? Sorry, one sec. A quick check of your comlink shows that your security feed has been terminated. Instead of a command view of the 24th floor, you find yourself staring at a blank screen. Okay, so they restored power. That sucks. Um, so this is a fighting zone. We don't have Dietrich, though, to summon a spirit here. And there's no one here right now. So my guess is we'll have to fight our way out. Maybe like once we grab it, alarms start going off or something. The door slides open with a pneumatic hiss. An enormous figure fills your vision. It stands motionless by a console in the center corner of the room. Almost, oh, almost every inch of the thing is covered in dull steel and gleaming chrome. It's mechanical arms and an articulated hands that wouldn't look out of place on an industrial machine. Bulky, cumbersome things designed for crushing power rather than finesse. Clutched in one of those crushing hands, a chain gun glints with sinister purpose. That shouldn't be possible. Nothing can be implanted with that much chrome and live. It isn't moving. I think it's, I don't know, on standby or something. The lights are on, but nobody's home. The figure stands completely still, but its eyeless head fidgets in agitation. Something about it reminds you of a snake tasting the air. Off to the side, the screen of a control console glows cheerfully in the gloom. So is, is the troll the Mark VI? Mark VI Cyber Zombie Prototype Control Console. The Mark VI prototype is the exclusive property of AG Chemi Europa. Unauthorized access is prohibited to put the prototype into demonstration mode. You may activate symptoms systems from the following menu. Alternatively, the system can be directly piloted via remote control rig. Chief, did you just read that? I'm gonna drive the hell out of this thing. 
Uh, sure, you can, Blitz. You know, serve any other purpose here. Uh, but let me read this first. Yeah, okay, sure, man. Due diligence and all that. Just like, don't take too long, okay? This is a golden opportunity. I don't want to waste it. He steps back. Uh, well, let's look at the readme. That's always good. Mark VI prototype demonstration model. The Mark VI prototype incorporates top-of-the-line cyberware from all AG Chem Europa subsidiaries, including the Zeiss Dead Sight Laser Designator, BUT Heavy Industries Powerlift Industrial Cyber Arms, and the brand new Zeiss Sense Shell Cyber School. Where necessary, competitors' products have been incorporated into the platform. Ares Dermal Plating, Universal Omnitech Move-By-Wire, etc. These systems should be considered placeholders for this proof-of-concept prototype. The biological component of the Mark VI was selected for size and durability by General Genetics Worldwide. All autonomous functions necessary to maintain the biological component are original to the component itself and should self-regulate within operational limits. As a proof-of-concept demonstration model, the Mark VI was designed for the remote for remote operation. A Zeiss Eye in the Sky drone control system has been incorporated into the Mark VI's cyber skull. Comlink control is also possible for casual control, but for product demonstration purposes, use of the drone control system is advised. The Mark VI prototype comes equipped with an Ares Vanquisher vehicular rotary cannon to demonstrate the Mark VI's actuated strength and recoil suppression capabilities. The model is also equipped with a global polymers monofilament axe for demonstration purposes. This weapon has been designed with heft well beyond the lifting capacity of any unaugmented metahuman. The Mark VI, of course, can swing it with ease. Long-term goals. In demonstrating the Mark VI's combat capabilities, it is this office's hope that AG Chemi Europa's new developed Formula 17 cybernetic reagent will prove its value to the board of directors, both as an astonishing technical achievement and as a lucrative new revenue stream for the company. Glory, take a look at this thing. As she stands next to the cyber zombie, you can't help but notice how much Chrome riddles her own body. Hmm. This cyberware is high grade, quality stuff, but not mil spec. The arms look industrial in design. Interesting choice, but there's nothing wrong with it. Huh, the control system looks interesting, like a drone control interface, but it's wired into the base of the skull. From the positioning, I'd say that it's connected directly to the thing's brainstem. Jack, listen to me. We've got to kill this thing. Ooh. This thing's our payday, Glory. What you on about? This... This troll, it's still conscious. He is still conscious. They've outfitted him with an inhibitor chip. He's trapped in his own body, screaming to get out. This isn't just a, pro a prototype, Jack. It's a person. We can't just cash him in for a paycheck. Yeah, can we do anything about it? So this will lose us, I guess, both of our paydays, but maybe get us in glorious good graces, which I'm fine with. Um, let's get him down to the garage first. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to have to activate him. Just remember, Jack, that's a man you're giving orders to, not a machine. Okay, I'm going to take a closer look at the control system. It looks as though it should be a fairly simple task to rig into it. It will still drive itself. However, your drone control rig should allow you to react to your commands much faster. Let's let Blitz rig into it. We're going to be busy with our own drones. Uh, 
glitch shifts uncertainly as he patches the cyber zombie into his drone control network. This is, a uh, strange, chief. The cyber zombie's massive hands flex twice and it takes a half step forward. Its mouth twists into a wide grin. <laughs> but I think I can get used to it. Alright. You hit the activation control and the cyber zombie lurches to life. It takes a step forward and you can hear the whir of actuators calibrating to adjust to its weight. A few seconds later, the whirring sound dies down and relaxes into a slight crouch. I've got it, chief. The Mark VI is under my control. But it's strange. The sim's reactions feel off somehow. It's almost like there's something else in here with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow and protect protocol. Well, sweet. We're gonna have to fight as soon as we get out of here, right? Because this seemed like a fighting room. Would you look at that? Jeez. Well, it didn't automatically start combat. Let's save. Drop your weapons and step away from the prototype. Do it now. That is true. Um, uh, do we threaten him with the cyber zombie? Let's do it. Try it. See what happens. Interesting. Do you honestly think they didn't install a safeguard in that thing? That we couldn't take it back from you at a moment's notice? Now drop your weapons or have that abomination tear you in half. Uh. Can't we talk against that? Come on. Okay, we're gonna have to do this quick, is my guess. We have to take out that dude. ASAP. Um, Oh, we have three action points now. I did not even realize. That's a weird looking drone. Okay. Sure, let's hang out back here. Oh, we can't throw a grenade right now. Okay, Blitz only has two action points. We need everyone in cover, I think. Oh yeah, Blitz has a drone too. It only has two action points. Okay. Sixty-six. That's not good odds, but try it. No. Iger can't get a good snip on him. I guess because he's undercover. Oh, a grenadier. Well, that was not 
as effective as I was hoping. Let's just send Glory in. I feel kind of bad that we didn't go in to cover ourselves. We're just going to be standing here in the middle of the room like idiots. That was pretty good. Is this going to hit Blitz too? Oh, yeah. Holy cow, that is amazing. Well, that was a lot of damage. Um. Glory, kill this. Kill this dude. Eviscerate him. Drones, you are very injured. Oh, here, do you have a good shot on anyone? Yes. Okay, Grenadier is down. Great job. Let's throw a grenade. Oh, that completely destroyed that Inferno Spirit. Very cool. Uh, you don't even have to do anything, bro. But we might as well. That's a huge axe. We definitely can't keep this thing. My concern is that, like... So, okay, if, if Glory can remove its inhibitor chip or whatever, like... This guy's totally fucked. Like, so much of his body has been replaced. Is he just going to go, like, mental and attack us the moment that he's free? Is he just going to be like... I don't know. camera vision anymore. Let's just try and go the direct route. Damn. We're gonna have to go all the way around. Oh, we're already in combat mode. To a scout. Ok, 
Okay. Let's go here. These drums still pretty messed up. A bit. That drone. Maybe go here and have um, Jack repair you. Actually, Blitz should probably be able to repair you, right? damaged. Uh, but we're not going to give it to the lodge, so I guess that doesn't matter. Let's keep him back anyways. Oh, there's a rigger. your buddy. Awesome. Iger, you take out the rigger. Flanked. How's he flanked? Oh. Well, that's cool. I don't know if I want to send Glory out there just yet. Maybe with this thing out there to give her some backup. We'll do a concussion grenade next turn, maybe. That's actually not looking too bad anymore. Eviscerate. No! One damage? Wall. 
Look at Iger. Can you take out that rigger? Bam. This mage looks squishy. He is in cover, though. Where's Sundowner? Ooh, yes. Amazing. Okay, big boy. You get over here. Um, eviscerate. The captain. Oh. Sweet. get shot. Let's, uh, let's everyone move up then. Let's give my main character some action point again. start working my way up. Tiger, you need to reload. So Blitz can maybe come here. Got it. Yeah, just chill there, Cyber. I think 
we can turn these off for now. That way we can just position ourselves a little bit quicker. Take our time. Yo, can you open this? Looks as though a skilled dagger could probably drag in over at the door controls. Where's that blue light? I wonder if I can just like stealth around. Are there gonna be people over here? actually hack this computer over here. That's fine. I'm good just getting out of here. Okay, Glory, keep scouting. You're doing good work. We still have to fight this way. But it does look easier, I think. Yeah, okay. I guess there's no way to uh, bypass everyone. Make me wonder if there's something interesting in there, maybe some pay data. But yeah, I don't know. We just want out.
Oh, there's more people here than I thought. Great. Oh, where can I go? Let's go up here. Let's see, you can hang out with Glory. Take out this guy, okay. Okay, override in progress. That's not good. Oh, we don't have a shot. Okay, I need everyone's drones. Send him in. That didn't kill him? Oh, why are we doing so little damage now? I didn't realize I had two action points either. I... Or you're gonna take some hits. Sorry. And Iger, you don't have a shot on anyone. Oh, you're not Iger. What did I just do? Take some damage. They're gonna get wrecked next turn by the stroll though. How? That hurt. Let's do what we can first. Here. A grenadier? No. Oh. You will die. Ninety-five, right? Uh, 
Uh, let's get this guy. Killed me. Oh, really? There are more people down there? Oh, do they have another rigger? Please tell me no. I mean, I do like that they're all stacking up there. guy. What can you do about this mess? take out the computer. They are super annoying. Not a fan of Okay, Glory, you have to go in. I should have done like the twin dragon strike or whatever. Not enough ammo. Oh, they have a sniper. I didn't even notice. Just have too much cover, I think. Let's save Iger for later. Oh yeah, you. That's fine. You eviscerate him. Big guy, please take out sniper snipe. Not enough ammo. Damn. Do a better shot here, Iger. I'm sorry, Glory. I did not think that through. Target head. It's 
sniping with the sniper. Sniper, no sniping. Okay. Please. Okay. Sweet. Well, then attack the Sundowner drone. I'm happy. suckers. Wait, this door was locked the whole time anyways? Oh, so if we did go in through here, we'd have to... Okay, so we did skip a whole combat. Nice. Why is my frame rate so weird right now? Okay. Let's save. tinker with this troll. You step into the garage, prototype in, in tow. Before you are two vehicles that you knew would be waiting, your client's van and the lodges. And nobody but you knows what the presence of the second van means. Decisions, decisions, huh, chief? <laughs> Can't say like they do. Oh, hey, Ace, what's up? Can't say I like the idea of handing this thing over to Schmidt. Lord knows what he's gonna do with it. I can tell you how to handle this one, fearless leader. And the kindest thing to do would be to put that troll out of his misery. Lord knows it's what I want to do. But then the job's the job, and Air Schmidt hired us for a reason. I'm with Blitz. There's a living troll buried under all that chrome. We can't just hand him over like a piece of merchandise. What's your call, Chief? Can't say I envy your decision. Uh, so that's Schmidt's, that's the Lodge's van. Let's look at the cyber zombie. As you approach the Mark VI, its head turns to track you, its body held at rigid attention. What? What do you mean, Ace? You're not a moth, you're an axolotl. I mean, I guess an axolotl is a larva, so... Maybe they turn into moths now. A winged axolotl. A salamander moth. Oh no, we have to choose between the two of them to disable the control circuits. Um. Let's have Glory try it, maybe. Oh, okay. Alright, I'll see what I can do. 
Glory takes a moment to examine the protrusion at the base of the Mark VI's spine. Then she pops the case on the Cyber Zombies control unit. Her sculpted fingers flicker and dance on the Mark VI's circuitry. A moment later, a strange shiver runs through its body. It stumbles forward, lurching awkwardly on its feet. A few seconds later, it seems to recover. It stares at your hands for a moment and then turns to face you. You can give me some nigan. Or you could just buy me a soy calf. The Mark VI speaks two words, its voice as brittle as broken glass. Thank you. Slowly, mechanically, the cyber zombie reaches up to grip its head in both hands. And it squeezes. Caught in the vice-like grip of those heavy industrial cyber arms, the Mark VI's cyber skull might as well be made of tinfoil. The air fills with the tortured sounds of tearing plastic and buckling steel. The Mark VI gives a final heave, and its armored skull crumples like a paper cup. Its body goes slack, and it topples to the ground, dead. Well, that was unexpected, and also disgusting. Not as bad as letting him continue to suffer. He clearly wanted to die. Well, I guess we might as well load the body onto the van. Herr Schmidt won't be happy, but it's better than nothing. Oh, oh well. Hopefully we get at least some of the new Yen. My guess is instead of 20k, we'll just get 10k.
So yeah. I'm going to have to cut the stream maybe 20 minutes early, or, or an hour early in 20 minutes. Um, I'm still going to keep playing for the moment, but at 1, I will end the stream instead of at 2. Thank you, Ace. And uh, an emergency came up, so... Your subway car is empty on the return trip to the KB. This stretch of the sprawling U-Bahn tunnel system doesn't see much use, it seems. At least not at this hour. As the train rattles on, you find yourself lost in thought. Old memories creep, unbidden, to the forefront of your mind. Memories of Monica in the old days, and the crew that you used to run with. Memories of success and failure, of wealth and poverty, of good times and bad. Halfway back to the KB, you're joined by... You're jolted out of your reverie by a buzzing sound. Your comm link. You're receiving a call. The lodge is going to be real pissed. Your comm link buzzes. A quick glance at the screen tells you that... Oh, that's Ansel. The Ansel's on the line. You pick up and his voice fills your ear. Jack the Rigger, I trust I'm catching you at a good time. It is pretty loud in here. Uh... Yeah, I'm on my way back to the KB. Good. I have news. In your absence, I've made contact with another potential client. A rather elusive woman of as as Talaner descent. She calls herself Frau Mueller. She would not discuss the specifics of the job with me, but she did tell me what she was offering for the work. 36,000 New Yen. An impressive enough sum to justify consultation. Ooh, yeah, when? In a half hour. If you're on train back to the KB now, you should make it here with time to spare. I insisted that if a meeting were to take place, it would have to be at a location of your choosing. Frau Mueller has agreed to this. Where should I tell her to meet you? Um, hmm. Oh, jeez. Yeah, there's like nobody at the U-Bahn, so maybe, maybe the station would be pretty secluded. How about, let's go to the park. Noted, I'll set up the meet. Jack, there's one more thing. You should... Your comlet cuts to static. A moment later, the lights in the U-Bahn car flicker and wink out. You hear the screeching sound of steel on steel and the train grinds to a halt. Uh-oh. Dino DNA. Let's go out of here. Looks like the whole station's lost power. What? Oh, we have to do this quick. We have a meet in a half hour. Okay, I got a fuse. So there are squatters in this station, hopefully not ghouls. Fuse. Oh. It's a fuse box. Nothing looks out of order. Let's leave it alone for now. Look at, look at everything. The main station's power is off. Bridge controls. It looks like the console could extend the nearby bridge to cross the tracks, but with the power out, the entire thing is non-functional. Oh boy. Okay, let's swap the fuses and see what happens. The lights in the bathroom grab, the status next to track, remains red. Huh, I wonder why. I had the extra... 
Oh, okay, maybe we need two fuses on track. Okay. Track. Track. You place the extra fuse into a socket next to track. The status light next to track lights up green. Uh, so I guess there's a train still screwed. Yeah. Extend. The mechanical bridge smoothly slides out and spans the gap over the tracks. Okay, so we have a locked door. Whoa, it's so dark in this man, sir, you can barely see your hand in front of your face. What is this? The door is stuck shut. Okay, we... Yeah, you know what? Let's have someone force that door. Iger shoulder checks the door, and the crack of splintering plastic fills your ears. The door pops open. Oh, but I can't see anything. Not sure, we'll keep that. I guess it's just like a storage closet for grenades on the train station. I don't know. So dark. What? Are these people from the lodge, maybe? Because we failed in our, our job? Enforcer, heavy cover, medium cover, medium cover. Okay. We're gonna go here and activate one of our drones. And then let's not sit next to everyone else. and make it so if they grenade someone then they can't help but hurting themselves maybe. Eviscerate him, please. Really? Um. 
So we're still in combat mode, so it's not over yet. Pick this up. Encrypted PDA. Oh man. How should we stack up here? Yeah, maybe you go there. Iger can get here with the sniper rifle. Glory, you're gonna be the one to open the door. Let's can chill here. And Jack will go here. Mercenary Captain, Mercenary Enforcer. Eviscerate him! Oh. Someone else here, too. Okay. Let's just creep up. It's gonna be real hard to get a shot on anyone. Nice. Okay, Jack, it's drum time. Blitz, can you take out the stew? Thank you. Oh, hell yeah. That was cool. Okay, we're out of combat now, so that must be everyone. Let's hurry back to the meat. Oh, duh. Maybe we should have met at the station. The rest of the trip home is uneventful, but one thing is clear, someone is hunting you. This ambush was no chance gang warfare, but an organized attempt on your life. If Green Winters was right, then whoever killed him is now after you. The PDA that you retrieved from your attackers may hold some answers. It's time to return to your safe house and consult Paul Amsel. Okay, we have to go up to the stupid tree. Uh, 
Is Frau Mueller not here yet? Okay. Delivered all the data. Yeah, I guess we just love time until Frau Mueller's back. So let's go talk to Paul before we meet meet her. Probably talk to Glory as well. Ansel calls over his shoulder at the sound of your approach. His eyes are glued to his computer's display. Jack the Rigger, Frau Mueller should be on her way, but before you go to the meeting site, I have news. It can wait. Tell me what happened. Someone's hunting us. Truth be told, I've been expecting that something like this might happen. I'm just glad you made it out alive. Yeah, one of the attackers dropped this. Yes, yes, I should be able to extract some information from this. Give me a moment. Hmm, well, Jack, I was able to recover a file. But unfortunately, that's all I'll ever be able to pull off this thing. All that anyone will, truth be told. It must have been running some kind of counter-intrusion software. The instant that I gained access, it bricked itself. Oh, it's a one file, nice. Yeah, what, what was it? What do you get? A comm file. The audio is all here, but it looks like we've only got video from one side of the conversation. Let's see what we have. Oh, okay. Brockmire! Audrin here. What's your status? Target acquired, sir. You were right. We spotted him on the U-Bahn, just like you said. Probably on his way to a job. As per your instructions, we're going to try to take him out on his way back. He'll be more vulnerable that way. Hopefully injured and low on ammo, too. But only time will tell. Good man. Proceed as instructed. We'll do. Cosman's rigging up an ambush spot right now. We'll try to make it quick. Send me a calm when the job's done. Audrin out. Well, our scared friend makes an appearance. Scarred friend. Jack the Rigger, I suspect that Green Winter's predictions are coming true. I believe that Firewing is behind this. Be on your guard. You and the rest of your team. You made it through this attack relatively unscathed, but next time you might not be so lucky. Audrin, yeah, at least now we have a name. That's not all we have. As I was saying, when you first walked in, I've been productive as well. I was able to uncover some new evidence in your absence, and coincidentally enough, that evidence pertains to our scarred friend. You might recall that I said I'd dig into Audrin's skin grafts. Well, I did, and that search has finally borne fruit. One of my contacts inside of outside of Berlin handles the paperwork for private hospitals all across Germany. It's a dull, boring job, but it does have its perks. As it turns out, our scarred friend's skin grafts were performed at a legitimate hospital after all. Yeah, what is it? Well, they're rather light on identifying information. Our friend's name is listed as Max Musterman, the equivalent of John Doe. But they do cover his injuries in great detail. Audrin's injuries were d extensive. He had two broken ribs, a shattered pelvis, and he had sustained third-degree burns over 60% of his body. Most damningly of all, he was suffering from acute radiation poisoning. His body had absorbed, had absorbed over 5,000 millisieverts of ionizing radiation, a lethal dose without treatment. 
the information dries up at this point. We know that he was treated and discharged, but what happened afterward remains a mystery. Your thoughts? Hold nothing back. I'd like to hear everything that comes to mind. Um, so I think that this is like massively telegraphing that Adrian Vauclair is probably Audrin. Like, that shit that went back with Fire Room was pretty early when like metahumans were just coming out, right? So maybe like... Actually, wait, how does that work? Were just people being born as metahumans or were people... Like adults changing into metahumans. Okay, so it can't be Adrian unless unless he isn't an orc and he's just like really heavily mutated. Yeah, I don't know. My conspiracy theory goes down the drain. Uh, but it would match up if he if he had dragon fire and was in the socks for a considerable amount of time. Well, I think this first reply is just too, like, just totally obvious, so let's go with the dragon fire. If Firewing burned him, though, why would he be working for her now? It is weird, though, that we're assuming that dragon fire must be from Firewing. Like, I'm sure the other dragons also have dragon fire, right? Or is it just Firewing? I don't know. I don't think that Audrin is working for the Firewing. I believe he is serving her. On Green Winter's second DVD, he mentions that there is a cult within the Sox that worships the Firewing. The Disciples of the Cleansing Fire. Oh, okay, this would make sense. Yeah, he's part of the Children of Adam. Yeah, nothing more dangerous than a zealot. A hireling can sometimes be bribed or reasoned with. A pawn can be liberated, but if the Firewing soldiers look upon her as a goddess figure, nothing short of killing her will deter them, and even that might not stop them. So it is possible that Audrin is a dragon cultist. This seems to fit with much of the other information that we've uncovered. Did any other red flags jump out at you? Uh, so yeah, he was in the socks, duh, obvious. Agreed. 5,000 millisieverts is a lot of exposure. Short of basking in the glow of an unshielded reactor, I don't know how he'd have absorbed that much ionizing radiation without spending time in the socks. Alright, so Audrin was heavily irradiated, most likely from time spent in the socks. What else does this tell you? Uh, the hospital couldn't ID him, he was uh, homeless. <laughs> Indeed, if Audrin were a denizen of the Sox, a glowpunk, his lack of identifying information would make sense. It's a working theory, at any rate. So, to sum up, Audrin has probably spent time in the Sox. It's possible he even lived there as a member of Firewing's dragon cult, and he is after you. In my mind, all of this reinforces one fact. We need to find Vauclair, and we need to do it fast. Um, sure. Good, and that's all the more reason to gather Alice's fee as quickly as possible. And luck would have it, Frau Miller has arrived. Best of luck at the meeting, Jack. Remember, this is urgent. We need that money. Okay, let's save, and I have to uh, do some footwork, so sorry. Hmm. <sighs> 